Welcome back. Okay, and we are finishing day one of TFF 2020. We are finishing strong with Doc Kevin Lee Elder. We, I have to call this one going back to the future. Um, Kevin calls it from Britain 1914 to today, data visualization style guides. You choose which one you like. <laughs> But I am super pumped for this session because I like low key love style guides. Um, well, maybe not low key since I'm just like, I love style guides. So, so let me give uh, Doc a proper introduction. He is the professor of information systems tenured. He has 32 plus years experience teaching courses in IS, MIS, IT, CS, management, business admin, finance, HR, and accounting. Whew. I need some water after that. He's published more than 50 papers in journals and conference proceedings all around the world. He is an Atlanta local chapter leader hosting this for social good hackathons in Georgia and around the world. And he is ready to partner your company with outstanding student interns and graduates, especially in the Atlanta Southeast region. Doc, welcome. I cannot wait for this. Let's go. All right, can everybody hear me? I gotta, I gotta start off with a magic trick. I do this. I, I see your dogs, and I can hear you. Okay, great, great. Um, yeah, um, you might hear my dogs, so I thought I might as well put them in the background there. Um, so I got Rosie and I got Henry there, and Henry is also um, watching me. Um, Henry's logged in. Uh, as one of the participants. So at least I would have someone out there, but look at that crowd. We still got 28 attendees out there. Um, but I always got to start with a magic trick. This is my favorite magic trick for the first day of class where I come in and I tell the class, buy the book, buy the book. And when you read the book, you're going to look at it and it's just going to be blank. And again, this works so much better when I could just hand this to Emily and she can flip through it and go, yep, it's just a blank coloring book. And I say, okay, now watch my lecture go back to the book. And then when you go back to the book, oh, you'll start seeing pictures. It will start making sense. Um, but if you don't watch my lectures, you don't come to class, the book just is blank pages. Watch the lecture, all of a sudden you start seeing black and white. Try the hands-on assignments. And then all of a sudden, all the pictures are now in color. So again, this is my favorite simple illusion. Is it color? Is it black and white? or is it blank? And again, I can do the same thing with cards, so you don't want to play poker with me. Also, before I jump in, I've got to show you, I've got my first edition graphic methods for presenting facts. Um, it's a first edition, it's falling apart, um, but it is just an awesome book, and I'm happy to, uh, if you've never heard of it or never seen it before, uh, to uh, introduce you to it today. And he starts off by saying, to my mother. Isn't that great? So moms who biz, shout out to you. All right, so let me share my screen and get going. Let's see, what do I want to do? I want to come here and grab PowerPoint. All right, so you guys should be seeing my PowerPoint now. Let me play it from the start. All right, so as Emily said, um, I am a professor and I've been doing this for 30 plus years. And I've always been that guy who comes into the classroom and says, here's the theory, but I also want you to see what's going on in the real world. Um, and so I've always tried to bring in the real world. Um, for the last 10 years or so, I've been teaching visualization. And when I look out at the world, I just see visualization all over the place, depending on what tool you're using, depending on what organization you're working with. And so I've just been trying to figure out, okay, what is the body of knowledge of data visualization? What's going on here? Uh, and so I, I ran into a number of people who have helped me out along the way to find lots of good resources out there. And so I want to talk about some of my favorite. Uh, and uh, I've got to, uh, to do the early uh, shout out to Amy here. Uh, Amy is a great inspiration to me and all that she does everywhere. If you don't know Amy, uh, Google her. Uh, go to YouTube, better yet, and uh, do a search for Amy, and you will find tons of great talks. She does a really great fireside chat out there, um, and she's here. I see her there. I've got the chat up here so I can see. So Amy is here. Big shout out 
to Amy and the Data Visualization Society. It's a great organization. If you haven't heard about it, if you don't know what's going on, check them out, get out there and see what the Data Visualization Society is. And I'm hoping that through the Data Visualization Society uh, and all my academic folks and all of you folks uh, out there uh, in uh, uh, Twitterville can team up with us and let's start trying to identify what is it that folks really need to know or should know in order to be good at data visualization. So that's what my emphasis is. Um, so you can see there's my Twitter handle. If you're not following me on Twitter, you're missing all my Basset Hounds. Uh, there's my LinkedIn. If you're not linked with me, link with me. Always expanding my network every chance I get. And there's my email if you want to contact me. Uh, and uh, um, join me in any of the various things that I'm trying to do. Uh, in the chat, I already dumped these links in there uh, so that you can have them, so you can, can uh, uh, do whatever with them. Let me move my chat over here so I can see my slides a little better, but I like to try and see the chat as it funnels across. Um, so I want to take you back to 1914 and take a look at Britain. Again, that's my first edition sitting over there. Um, but we've got lots of resources on the internet to see what Britain said in 1914. I love history. And so um, anytime I can take a look at history, I love it. And so this is data visualization. Let's look at history. Uh, and if you don't know Andy, I'm going to introduce you to Andy and his, and his website. Uh, and he's got some really great material on Britain. And I've got a paper I'm trying to, to write, like so many things um, that I want to write with Andy and, and really write up what's in this book. It's really excellent. Uh, then I want to take you to uh, what Amy has done. Uh, Amy wrote a really awesome data visualization style guide article on Medium. And I just saw this and I'm just like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. Thank you, Amy. Uh, and then inside of her article, she went to a site and said, look, here are data visualization style, guide, style guides. I'm like, yes, Amy, this is excellent. Now, I'm an academic, so let me put a research spin on this. Um, so I decided to take the 1914 Britain stuff and compare them to these data visualization style guides that we had um, to see if we could really teach data visualization with style guides. And I think we can. I think we can establish what it is that we ought to be doing in our data visualization by, by collectively looking at these style guides. And then I loved it even more. She's got a link and says, please submit your style guides here. And so again, right up top, I want to say, please submit them there. Um, if you submit them there, then there'll be data points in this research that I'm trying to do. Uh, and so I uh, really appreciate anybody who wants to put these publicly available style guides there. If you want to keep your style guide private, but you'd like it to be a part of our data set that we can go through and run our content analysis on, run it through our code books, um, present our findings, but not present and not link to your style guide. I'd love to see some of the style guides, if you will, share them with me privately. And I promise never to make them public, but you'll be a part of that data set where we can really try and see what is important in this whole area. So uh, there's the links, they're in the, uh, they're in the chat and I'm over in the chat and I'm not on my slides and it's not going forward. So again, uh, uh, we wrote a paper and I presented it to uh, uh, a bunch of academics and I said, hey, academics, you need to be looking at this stuff. So today I'm taking what I presented to the academics and saying, hey, all you data viz pros out there, join us. Join us in this whole process of looking at data visualization style guides and trying to see if we can collectively say, hey, here's a body of knowledge. This is what collectively folks are saying we need to be doing in our data visualizations in order to make them uh, um, more accessible, make them easier to read, make them have more impact, all those kind of things that we all want to do. Um, so in uh, uh, Amy's article, um, she mentions a lot of these in the uh, website. You can grab the spreadsheet and you can find links to all of these style guides. And then now let's add to them and let's add to them and let's keep getting more and more of them out there um, so that we can uh, um, do a much better job, have a lot more data. We academics, we love our data. So more data points, the better. Um, but my grad students this spring are going to be coding all of this and they're going to be researching all of this 
and providing the data. And hopefully that will be a presentation at the outlier conference. So this is the, the process. This is the means of what I'm doing. Um, so again, if you go out and you look at Andy's stuff, Andy is really great. Uh, and uh, um, his uh, uh, pseudonym or, or whatnot for his site is Gravy Anecdote, which is um, scrambling his letters in his name and making a cool website. I can't do that. I tried. I'm not as good as Andy, just like the magic tricks aren't as good as Andy. Um, but he's got a great site. And so Andy introduced me to Britain. Uh, back in uh, 2014, he did a talk at uh, TC14 uh, talking about the 100 years of uh, visualizations and showing some of these things. So again, shout out to any of my Sports Viz Sunday folks out there. Uh, here is Britain in 1914 doing football drive charts, um, better than anything I've seen ESPN do on their website today. Um, so I just love when you can go back and find folks that are really good at this craft and then think, wow, I wonder what Britain would have done if he were here today and had all the tools that we have. Boy, we'd have some really great examples. Uh, Andy talked about the fact that it's practically uh, um, almost like an interactive dashboard type of thing that Britain is doing back in 1914. Just really, really cool stuff. Uh, and then, of course, Andy had to say, you know, hey, 100 years of data viz, we're still making some of those same mistakes. Uh, and in fact, I teach my students some of the mistakes and then my students for fun put those same mistakes in what they turn in. And I'm like, you know better than that. And yeah, doc, we're just pulling your leg. Uh, here's a great uh, photo in the book um, where he says, how did you share data in 1914? Uh, and there it is. <laughs> They've got giant data viz on boards and they're driving them through like a parade. Uh, and so that's how you're sharing. Now we have the internet. We can do this all the time. Uh, all over the place, but we're still making, again, 100 years worth of uh, uh, mistakes. Uh, and uh, here we go, uh, 1914, uh, here's a 3D uh, isometric paper uh, stacked chart. So even back then we could do really amazing things um, and it's all in black and white which is good for us colorblind. I have to throw that in there. Most people think the only thing I know is colorblindness. Now I do a lot more than that. Um, so here's, here's what I really found amazing uh, in Britain's book. He has two uh, of these lists at the back of the book where he says, this is what you need to do in order to have good data viz. Uh, and again, there's the link down at the bottom and it's over in the chat. You can actually go out to the archives and you can flip through the PDF of his book and you can download the PDF of his book um, if you're not lucky enough like me to find a 106 year old copy of the book. Um, but it's, uh, uh, it's a really great resource. It's a fun read if you love history, if you love looking at uh, um, charts and seeing what's good about a chart and what's not. Um, but think about what you've heard so far today. And I, I didn't have time to attend a lot of the sessions. I wish I did because I would have coded them and added it as some data points because I definitely heard some people talking about point number one, are, is this data even correct? Do we know that it's correct? How do we know it's correct? Uh, um, did they use the best method for showing this data? Um, I know uh, somebody just showed the, how do you choose your chart? And here are all the different charts and find your path to the charts. Britain was doing this um, with charts in 1914. Um, are your proportions right? Um, when you reduce the size and you put it on that mobile phone, is it gonna work? Britain foresaw mobile phones back in 1914. If we reduce it, are those pr proportions gonna be correct? Will it look right? Will it be able to, to tell people what we want them to see? Uh, again, uh, number nine, are the numerical figures for the data shown as a proportion of the chart? Again, he, he's got some pie charts in there. They're great. You should see them. They're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, are all zero lines and 100% lines made broad enough? So are you really showing? Here's the top, here's the bottom, and here we are uh, somewhere in the middle. Um, from the chat, somebody saying, how about number 17? Is all the lettering placed on the chart in the proper directions for reading? We just had somebody say this, right? Do I have to turn my head sideways to, to try and read this? Then we probably don't uh, 
probably that's not going to be very useful. Uh, um, he talks about cross hatching. Right? So don't just use color to draw people's attention. They would, since they didn't have color, everything was black and white, they would use cross hatching where they would do lines across and then lines going uh, 90 degrees the other way. And that would highlight something if you wanted to draw attention to it. Or there was bin day shading and bin day shadings are a lot of fun. I didn't grab one in here. Um, Google it, there's lots of great bin day shadings. We've gotten away from that. And when we've gotten away from that and we've gone to 15 colors on our chart, us colorblind folks are going, ah, what are you doing to me? Uh, and back in 1914, uh, Britain was saying, here's easy ways uh, to, uh, uh, um, to, uh, to do this. Um, yeah, somebody's asking Ben Day. Uh, mm, I'm drawing a blank. Somebody throw it in there for me. Uh, but again, just great stuff from, again, 1914. So I, um, it was, uh, I think, about two or three years ago on Twitter, we kind of had this discussion. Somebody said, hey, where are some good guidelines for stuff? And Andy said, there you go, 1914. And I'm just looking at it. I'm going, well, yeah, I think it covers a lot here, Andy. I think we've got a lot of things in here. I, um, and and uh, again, um, just just really fun to look at. So again, I got to throw a color slide in here at least once um, um, in my uh, um, advice from the colorblind. Um, we do see red and green, um, but our problems are yellow and green that we have trouble with down there. So the Washington Redskins and the Jets when they played was the problem. The Jets and Tampa Bay when they played with the green and red, we don't have a problem with that. Um, but the orange and red we have trouble with, or the blue in the Colts and the purple in the Vikings and the Navy of the Texans. Um, when we're colorblind, we have to teach ourselves that. Uh, whereas back in Britain's day, hey, it was white, it was black, and we could do some shading and we got gray in the middle. Three colors tells you everything you need. You really don't need all that color, especially if we can't see it. Um, so again, uh, I have to throw that in because that's what I'm uh, known for uh, in a lot of circles is I love to talk about I'm colorblind. How can I help you? How can I help you choose better colors? Um, but again, in 1914, I, uh, uh, Britain saw this, right? So he had his list, check off that list. And then here he goes, okay, here are our rules now. Um, so we're now into the graphics itself um, and so he's talking about area and volume. Uh, he's talking about the general arrangement of things. Uh, he's talking about the vertical scales, the horizontal scales. He's talking about numerical data, um, lettering of the figures, column of figures. Um, wind charts are colored. The color green should be used to indicate features that are desirable and red for features that are undesirable. So again, he dealt a little bit into color and he probably shouldn't have, um, because if any of you folks are international, I think we've got some international folks on the uh, uh, in the chat in the session still at 7:48 at the end of a long day. Um, red is not universally bad. There are many many countries where red uh, is a very honorable uh, color, and it does not have that negativity associated with us that. Um, some of us in the West think, oh, red is bad, green is good. Uh, and um, we kind of carried it over to accounting, right? If you're in the black, that's good. If you're, if you're in the red, that's not good. Um, but again, colors are not uh, um, universal. And so there's a whole talk on, on colors. Um, don't go to Britain um, for your color advice, but everything else here is just really good stuff. Um, talking about the math behind things, uh, um, talking about how you can visibly see things and make things better. Uh, and uh, again, you can see I've got some notes in my first edition uh, that are that are showing up in in uh, in my list. Um, so uh, what we thought was, you know, people don't really follow instructions, right? So I always when I give talks and, and talk about. Um, not following instructions. I got a whole bunch of these. So I'll run through a few of them because I know um, where we at 749. So um, it, at least here, and if anybody's here from Europe, do I have anybody here from Europe? 
Um, Cause if you're here from Europe, um, what is it in England? It's almost 1 a.m. Uh, farther uh, east, it's uh, 2 a.m. Is that right? Am I doing that count right? It's late at night for you folks in Europe. What are you doing here? Uh, so uh, people just don't like to follow directions and we see this all over the place. So here's Taco Bell, didn't quite get the ingredients inside of the shell. Uh, um, how about this one, do not stack. Yep, there they are, they're stacking them. Uh, how about this one, laying bricks. I laid bricks in the, in the summer when I was in uh, high school. Uh, if I would have laid that one red brick over there, I would have just said, hey, I'm colorblind. Uh, how about this one, there's some long yellow things. Again, people do this to me because um, they know I'm colorblind, <laughs> those look green to me. They don't look like long yellow things. But again, that's another talk. Um, how about this one? Go to the left or go to the right? I like this one because actually my wife's Toyota RAV4 on her GPS does this. Because on the RAV4 and the GPS, it's doing a cone. And so actually the cone is pointing you over to the left and the cone is pointing you over to the right. Um, but when I give this talk in person and I say, uh, the button that says left, what way is it pointing? Most people are gonna say it's pointing to the right. And like I say, when I use drive my wife's RAV4, I'm like, why are all the directions backwards on this? Why is it? And it's not because I'm colorblind. Um, how about this one? Here's the water section of the local store. Um, I guess we could have a whole religious discussion about changing water to wine, I guess. Um, and this is my favorite, um, the College of Architecture and Planning. Look at the college over there. Um, yeah, that's why in the movies, professors, you always, if you see a professor, he's either evil or clueless, right? We're not all evil and clueless. Um, and we're not all in our ivory towers of the College of Architecture and Planning. A lot of us are out there trying to see what are you guys talking about? What do you think? What are the things you're looking at? What do you think is important here? Uh, and so again, uh, I gave the shout out earlier because Amy had said she was gonna drop by. Um, if you have not read any of Amy's stuff, get busy, you got reading homework over the weekend. Um, but if you're gonna read one thing uh, from Amy uh, for data visualization, read her article on what are data visualization style guides because I stole liberally from uh, um, her article um, to throw together the article for the academics to see, look, here's what people are talking about. This is what uh, is important uh, in data visualization. Uh, and these style guides can really be a great way to get your handle on what should we be doing in our data vids. Um, so again, the link is over in the chat. I'll have it again, uh, but uh, just Google what are data visualization style guides. Hopefully you'll hit Amy's article first. You might hit that academic version uh, that I put together for the uh, for the profs and tying it to, to Britain, um, but it's a really great article. Uh, and again, in uh, this uh, article, um, she uh, gives the definition that these data visualization style guides are the standards for formatting, designing representations of information like charts, graphs, tables, and diagrams. And they include the types of charts and the why, what's the reasoning that you're doing for specific colors or that specific chart. Um, there are templates out there um, to help you do a better job of setting up these uh, data visualizations. And in or large organizations, they'll have more than just a data visualization style guide. They'll have brand standards. They'll have editorial guidelines. If you're gonna release this uh, in an article, if you're gonna put this on your public website, um, they talk about logos and brand colors. I do a lot of uh, pro bono work with companies and say, you know, that logo and those colors are not working for me. And let me show you why. And let me help you uh, try and figure out a better scheme for you to use to kind of be your face out there uh, with people interacting with your organization. Um, they try and help us maintain some kind of uniformity. Again, if you ask people what's important in your data viz, what's in your style guide, you find all kinds of stuff. So again, that's where my academic side is kicking in and saying, can't we look at as many of these as possible? And once we get 30, yeah, I'd say maybe 30 or so of these, 
then it's going to probably, yep, seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it. And once we get past 30, there's probably not going to be a lot more to add. Um, and so we, I think we've got about 18 or 20 now. Uh, and I'm hoping tonight um, there's 20 or so out there, I think, still with me. Uh, and uh, hoping that you all know uh, where there are some style guides or you have your own style guide that you want to put out there. Uh, and this is one of my, my favorite quotes, and I throw this into my class presentations all the time. Supposing is good, but finding out is a lot better. Um, so we suppose these things are working, but finding out is much, much better. Um, so again, here's the Google Doc that uh, Amy has linked through her article. And this is what we used in the original paper uh, to compare all these various organizations and the different types of style guides that uh, are here. And then we looked back at Britain and found, yep, um, Britain talks about nearly all of this. Uh, again, there obviously since 1914, there's, there's uh, um, different tools different ways that we are doing this, but the basic theory, the basic ideas are really not that different. Um, and so uh, again, there's plenty of them out there. So again, um, there's the link, you can find the ones that are out there and there's the link, go add yours, put yours out there. And again, if you don't wanna put it out there publicly, but you've got one and you'd like uh, me to give you some feedback on how yours compares to uh, our uh, code book, that we are creating from looking across all of these, happy to do that, would love, love to see more of these. Um, so uh, Amy actually did this back in, oh, uh, Amy, 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 2014, I believe, maybe. Um, I, she did this um, Sunlight Foundation one, which is really great, I love it. Um, she talks about color, she talks about um, basic structures, um, when they're useful and what are the different parts of the charts and why you would want to do them. Just a, a fabulous style guide. If I said, look at one style guide, here you go. Take a look at this one. But better yet, keep going. Keep looking at more and more. Um, so here's the Cato Institute. Who, who, who would have thought? Um, looking at uh, using the colors, looking at line charts, looking at using gray to de-emphasize things so we can zero right into that color you're trying to show me out of 20 colors. Again, don't show me 20 colors, but if you have to, allow me when I mouse over to, here's the one I want you to see, and everything else falls into the background when I see that. Those, those tool tips, those the fabulous things um, that the Flage Brothers write all these great blogs about. Use those things in your visualizations and add them as your style guide and you will have much better across your organization standardization and people will know and expect, hey, when I mouse over, it's gonna do this. When I look at this kind of chart, here's what I ought to be seeing right away. Um, and, and always I love in these style guides where they say, don't do this or, or please stop doing these things. Um, and so uh, again, I just quickly, I wanted to, to show um, some of these, the London I, I city intelligence one is really cool. It's got lots of great uh, um, things that you can see in it and lots of good charts and examples. Um, Dallas Morning News kind of gets into more of the editorial kind of thing. And really, if you stop and think about it, if you're creating data viz in your organization, you are a journalist and you are trying to convey information to someone. Um, and so you could learn a lot from looking to see, well, what does Dallas Morning News say? And what's their style guide? And, and what are they doing? Uh, and how are they doing it? And I know there's gotta be more out there. So go to the link, plug them in, grab that website, put it in there. Let me know, send me an email, tweet it out. Um, find me on LinkedIn. Um, there are just so many of these. The BBC has a really good one. Uh, and talking about responsiveness of infographics, just, just really good stuff. Um, got to include Google in there. Um, my son's at Google uh, doing some great stuff. Um, and, and Google just has tons and tons of, of material out there. Um, lots of good examples, lots of good things. You don't have to use their tools. You don't have to, to, to use their search engine, um, but you can definitely, definitely um, get a lot out of 
uh, looking at these various style guides from different types of organizations. And I love the fact that Amy was able to go through in just this subset of style guides that are out there and find all kinds of different organizations and different things that they emphasize, but collectively they're doing a lot of the same things. All right, so these data visualization style guides are kind of here in the middle where we've got brand manuals, we've got editorial guides, we've got pattern libraries, we've got code frameworks, there are templates, and my favorite, these chart of charts. Um, so uh, again, uh, on the site, you can see where the federal government um, has their design system ad nauseum uh, in, in lots of detail. Um, MailChimp is a great example of a brand guide and saying, here's our brand and this is what we're doing. And you want to do the same thing or a similar thing with your brand in your industry with what you're trying to do. Here's some great tips you can learn from them. Um, pattern guides, um, going back to the BBC, there's some really good um, pattern guides and things you want to do. What happens when I get an error message? How do I know um, what that error message is? Um, just so many great examples. And I'm sure um, if you've been doing this for a while, um, the Financial Times has their uh, uh, visual vocabulary. Uh, and uh, Andy uh, Krebel has a great chart that's out there. Um, and everybody has copied it and stolen it from him when he allowed people to download it. And so you can find this all over the place. But we need to do, please credit Andy. Uh, for doing this. Uh, and so, uh, uh, again, I don't think I had Andy's in that bunch of links out in the chat, but Andy's stuff is legendary. Um, everybody knows Andy. Uh, if you're in the Tableau world, if you're in the data viz world, uh, and the visual vocabulary is just really great for saying, you know, what are we trying to do? Correlation, change over time, part to the whole, ranking, all of these things are, are, are just marvelous. And then my new favorite, uh, along with Andy uh, is uh, um, Kevin Fleurage um, with his Tableau chart of catalogs. This is just so awesome. If you guys have not seen this, again, I didn't put Kevin's in the, uh, uh, in the chat for you. Sorry about that, um, but you can find it. Um, Kevin is, is everywhere these days um, in a short amount of time going from the unknown twin uh, to the more well-known twin, sorry, Ken, uh, passed him up on the number of likes and the number of views of what Kevin is doing out there. I love Kevin's stuff so much that I had our print shop take his high-res image that he um, sent to me, the high-res image of it, and I got it printed out in our lab. So there's a bunch of my kids there. Um, those kids are working at Home Depot, uh, KPMG, NCR, uh, another Home Depot working out at, at Robbins Air Force Base. Uh, and there it is in my office. So I've got Kevin's um, chart catalog there, 100 different charts, 74 different awesome authors that if you're uh, doing this, you should be looking at Bo, Bo's work or Bridget does some great stuff or Mark or Ava or Pablo or Lorna. You got to have Lorna out there. 74 different authors, hundreds of different charts really great to, to see all kinds of cool stuff that you can do. Um, so again, if we can standardize, if we can collectively say, hey, this is what people should be doing in order to make good data visualizations, then I think I could start trying to call that a body of knowledge. And I think we could start getting that out to industry and saying, hey, industry, this is the body of knowledge. And then they can say, no, you left out this, or I don't like that. or you're, and, and so we can get industry to say, hey, here's what we think about this body of knowledge. And then I can let these academics do research and see if the research matches what the industry folks are doing. Um, but the only way uh, we're going to be able to do that is to systematically review these. And so again, I, um, we showed the, the pilot study and what we want to do with the pilot study. And so now we are collecting more and getting more data points and we're gonna develop that code book and that code book will then get turned into, here's a body of knowledge, here's what you ought to have in your style guide. Again, not saying this is how you should do it, but saying you need to have these kind of rules and guidance and, and whatnot um, for your data visits to be more standard and more effective. 
Uh, and so that's what um, I'm trying to do here is bring all these groups together. Um, so uh, one of my favorite uh, slides and quotes, especially with academics, not so much you industry folks, but with my academic types that I work with, um, I love to give folks video homework. So if you haven't watched Roxanne, weekend homework, go watch the movie Roxanne. I, um, um, it's, a, it's a remake, a uh, new version of Cyrano de Bergerac. Um, so Steve Martin is a volunteer uh, fire department, fire chief, and he's trying to train all these volunteer uh, firemen to make them into real firemen. And he comes back one night and there's a fire in the firehouse and all the guys are upstairs playing poker. They have no idea that there's a fire in the garbage can. And he comes in and he gives this great speech. And if I, if I trusted Zoom, um, I would bring it up, um, but you can bring it up and, and take a look at it and watch the whole thing over the weekend anyway. But he says, look guys, I have this, this dream that when there is a fire in town, that the folks would say, call the fire department. Because if there was a fire in town and everybody said, whatever you do, don't call the fire department because they're just gonna make it worse, that would be bad. And a lot of times with my academic folks, this is what I'm saying is, why aren't people coming to us and saying, hey, teach us about this? Um, because we're stuck in 1914 um, and we need to come forward and we need to, to partner and work hand in hand with industry to say, hey, what are you guys doing? And what's working for you? And why is it working and why isn't it working? And then we can come back and say, well, you know, we got some theory about this from psychology or op research or supply chain or math or data science. There's all kinds of research. Tableau is built on research, yet most people using Tableau don't know what that research is. And so that's what I'm trying to do is be this person in the middle to say, hey, academics, work with these uh, industry folks and let's come up with uh, the basic body of knowledge is my favorite term of the day. Maybe I'll change it to something else later on, but this is what data visualization style guides are all about. And collectively, I think we could teach folks how to do good data visualizations if we had a, a, a common set of things that should be, and we can all argue. Um, I love to get into argument about pie charts are terrible. Um, it's just how you're using them. Pie charts can be marvelous. If you want to say sum of a whole and you got maybe three parts to it, pie chart is great. Past that, yeah, you're misusing it. Um, so don't misuse it. Uh, and then my last plug, I've got to say, um, come and talk to me about being a professor for the day. Um, I totally open up my capstone course to industry pros to come in and say, here's what I do. Here's the tools I use. These are the types of problems I face. This is how I go about doing my job. Um, and that is so much more educational for my students about to enter the profession than me sitting there all semester telling them this is what you should do. You guys will come in and you'll say something similar to me and I'll go, hey, wait a minute, I said that. They're like, yeah, but he's from Home Depot. Um, so we want to we want to listen to him. So I had Carl do a great session on Tableau Prep. He's going to be my first guest professor in the spring. Um, Spencer and Nick did ones on Power BI and Alterx for me this semester. And so I'm gathering up folks uh, and, and signing them up and, and recording virtual lectures. Uh, and then my students will watch those virtual lectures. They'll come up with some questions for you. We'll circle back. We'll do a 15, 30 minute Q&A, hopefully live during my classes on Monday, Wednesday, midday here on the East Coast. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for you guys to help mold the future professionals to pay it forward. Somebody helped me, now I wanna help them. And again, I'm using this as another way to have folks come in and at the end of the semester, I go, wow, look at what all these folks said. This is what you should do for data visualization. And that will give me yet another set of data to compare to our integrated codebook um, visualization style guide. Um, and maybe we're getting somewhere. Um, maybe we can make something out of this. Um, so I went ahead and put in uh, my name into the into the hat with the data viz uh, society of saying, um, boy, I'd love to be your education director. And I'd love to be working to tie these groups together and putting some model curriculum out there, putting some lecture material out there. 
Uh, again, my professors for the day, I hold them on the other side of our firewall. You got to pay our tuition um, to see them. But if I start doing the same thing for Data Viz Society, then we'll make these videos available to everybody. Um, talk about data literacy, talk about accessibility, um, talk about half of French Fest today could be a professor for a day session. Um, so again, here are the links. Uh, I threw them into the chat. I've seen other folks are um, throwing different ones uh, into the chat. Um, but Britain is, is really cool stuff from 1914. Um, still very applicable today. Um, great book. You can go see it. Uh, again, Amy's article is awesome. Um, the collection of style guides that we have now is great. It's a great start for us, but we need lots more. I love bigger ends. I like big data, um, but we've got a great start to it, but we need your help. So please, here we go again. Third time's the charm. Maybe I can, can get it, you know, repetition, repetition. Um, maybe it's the only thing uh, you can remember. And from my Air Force days, I've always got to uh, throw my uh, airplane out there uh, with my B-2 bomber, um, throwing down the questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, I would love uh, to uh, uh, answer any of them that you might have. If not, then what I thought I would do is stop sharing. So I can figure out what I'm doing and share Chrome. If I share Chrome and I get this stuff out of the way. Um, so again, here's Andy's uh, 100 Years of Britain. Just awesome, awesome stuff uh, that he uh, has uh, collected out there. I showed you the, the drive chart. Uh, again, the auto updating maps. Um, here's the uh, um, uh, Ben Day uh, shading examples there. Uh, um, looking at uh, pie charts, um, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, and again, if you don't know Andy, how do you not know Andy? Big book of dashboards, gotta be sitting on your shelf if you're creating dashboards. Uh, and just uh, um, great, great uh, um, evangelist for uh, Tableau, um, but an even greater evangelist for this is what we should be doing with Dataviz. Um, so Andy put together this great site and I'm trying to work with him uh, to build a uh, article out of that for my academics to see and for you guys to see. And again, here's the uh, graphic methods uh, um, book uh, that you can, you can get and you can go through the archives. And you can sign up and you can just download the whole PDF. So I download the whole PDF. I give that to my students and I say, here, read history. This is great stuff. Um, while you're also reading um, Tableau Your Data from Dan Murray or uh, um, communicating with Tableau by Ben Jones to get you started. Um, but go back and look at Brenton. Look at these awesome charts from 1914. Um, just some really great stuff. Uh, again, here's Amy's article. Um, if you're not reading Nightingale, what are you guys reading? Get out there and read Nightingale. It's a really great resource. Tons of great articles out there. Um, um, I just don't know how these folks find all this time um, to do all these wonderful things. Um, but again, Amy back in 2014, so I had that one right. Um, she did the sunlight one. And so again, you can just go and you can click on it and go and take a look uh, at, at each of these uh, and you can grab the, uh, the spreadsheet that uh, points to uh, all of them and um, more than uh, what I put in the uh, PowerPoint and more than what we put uh, in the article. The only thing is she started with the Financial Times and I'm like, oh, I got to throw Kevin in there because that 100 uh, Tableau chart catalog uh, is just really, really awesome. Um, so again, here's the Google Docs uh, file. Uh, and uh, um, it just ends with somebody put one in and said, yeah, I got no idea. Um, great, uh, keep, keep doing this, keep, keep adding to this list. We'd love to see more. Uh, and again, if you don't wanna make it public facing, but you'd like to have yours uh, go through our coding process and do a comparison uh, to what we come up with as we're creating this body of knowledge, happy to do that, love to do that academics live for data. Um, so again, here's a few of them. Microsoft, 
You may not be a big fan of Microsoft, um, but Microsoft has a huge data, visu data visualization style guide out there um, with lots of really good stuff. Um, here's Salesforce and Salesforce uh, talking about primarily, this is what we were now going to call Salesforce CRM. Uh, this will probably get merged uh, at some point here uh, with uh, um, Tableau. Uh, but uh, um, good stuff from um, Salesforce. Uh, here's another a uh, really good website example and talking about um, things that will help you make your data viz easier for folks to understand and talking about different types of charts and selecting them. Uh, again, if I wanted you to look at one, I'd say go look at Amy's from 2014. Again, I love when I can tell my students, go back and look at something in 2014 and then think about what was your cell phone like back in 2014? pretty old, pretty ancient, you know, six years is what, almost is four generations of technology um, and just some really great stuff uh, about how to make your visas uh, um, more standard, more accessible, easier for folks to do. Uh, again, it's real easy. Just if it's publicly available, give me the URL, give us the name, um, give us the company type so we can kind of uh, break these out. Um, if you know when it was last updated, throw that in there. If you want to give us a description, throw that in there. Uh, and again, if you don't have a URL and you don't have it publicly available, if you can shoot it to me uh, in, a, in a, a PDF or in some kind of format that we can use it in our study, not make it public, um, would love to, uh, to do that with you folks uh, as well. Uh, and then again, here is uh, on the Tableau side, since uh, um, we got so many Tableau folks here. Um, Tableau uh, has a lot of things out there for accessibility. Uh, and uh, um, we just had this two speakers ago, Joanna. And um, lots of good stuff that Tableau has as well. But I think if we collectively bring them together, we'll really be getting somewhere. Um, so I appreciate your stamina for those of you that are still with me. Um, and I'm not seeing any questions and I'm going over time, but you can do that when you're the last one of the day. Um, so I appreciate everybody and your time. And this has been a fun day. Um, there's lots of good material out there from so many speakers. And I would love to connect with as many of you as possible. I am off for six weeks to set up this spring class. So I'm gonna be recording lectures and chatting with as many people as I can morning, noon, night. If you're in Australia, I'll get up at two in the morning here and chat with you. Um, please connect with me and let's, uh, let's create a data visualization body of knowledge. The analytics body of knowledge doesn't include visualization. Let me say that again, the analytics body of knowledge does not include data visualization. Go check it out. It's astounding. So I've said, why am I going to try and fix the analytics body of knowledge? Let's just create a visualization body of knowledge because there's so many of us that could use this, uh, in my opinion. So again, thanks so much. I'll stop. I'll let Emily, jump in on me. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. It was such a great uh, discussion and presentation. And I think I was getting the sense that you wanted us to submit style guides. <laughs> is, is that what I got from your talk? <laughs> I think you saw it four or five times, right? Yeah, something like that. It's, it's, um, it's what I have to do with undergraduate students. Yeah, so um, we'll also tweet it out to help kind of get that message out there. But thank you so much for this. I think it was really great. We got to hear about the Ben Day shading and um, just, it was so funny to take and it always is fun I think to take a look at like what Britain wrote in 1914 and go oh isn't that fun uh isn't that kind of interesting compared to like where we are now with the digital space so really appreciate your talk as always so good um yeah Johanna said what a treat doc so yeah <laughs> thank you thank um, you um, thank you so I, I think much. you can tell I'm I'm a little passionate about I, you know what, I gathered that and that's perfect.
perfectly fine. Um, I also love Britain. It's like since Andy or when Andy kind of did that hundred years and look where we are now type of thing. That was really like my first exposure to it. And it's been really fascinating. So I love that you're kind of like picking it up and trying to do more with it to help create that body of knowledge for other people to learn from. So thank you for that. Yep. All right, folks. Well, first of 